Um, our next talk, Tutti a Tavola, an uh, OER elementary Italian textbook. Um, our two speakers are both from University of Massachusetts at Amherst, UMass Amherst, Stacy Jufre and Melina Masterson. So the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, we're so happy to be here. And it was so interesting to see um, Lorraine and Kata's presentation too, just to see how these different, how they're deployed differently and different platforms and everything. Um, I think Stacy's going to show the book while I give a little introduction, then she's gonna go through it. Um, so we use the pr Pressbooks platform um, for our book. And this whole idea, just in terms of how we came about it, was um, Stacy had had a fellowship at UMass, an Innovate Fellowship, where she learned more about these resources. And namely, maybe like Pitt does, like Lorraine said, um, UMass Libraries does provide um, funding every year. There's a grant um, awarding for every year for open educational resources, which we learned about. Um, so we started the conversation, but we really thought, do we have the time and energy and uh, wherewithal to do this project, which like the other course would cover two semesters or one intensive course. Um, we know the mass market textbooks we've always used in the past. And so we know what it take, what we wanted to offer our students um, in doing this. So we went back and forth wondering if we could do it. And then really for us, it was COVID that encouraged us to do it. Um, so we really got to a point where you know, being isolated in our houses, we sort of needed a project. And we decided that whether we got funding or not, we were going to do it because we just decided we wanted to offer this resource to our students. We saw all these holes in the market and things that we wanted to offer that weren't there. And so we decided to do it. So once we made that decision, we just jumped in head first. We started brainstorming structure and content. And we based the structure on a lot of books that we've seen in the past. So really communicative language textbooks that are, are to be used at home, but also in the classroom. Um, but I think when we really started that, that was our initial goal was, okay, we wanna create a free and kind of customized resource for our students, but it really evolved from there um, because I think COVID in particular put such an emphasis on these issues of equity in terms of technology and access and representation. So when we started working out, I think our main goal was to make it an economic choice. And it really became so much more in terms of inclusion and diversity with what we decided to do. Um, so the inclusive aspect of having a low cost option quickly manifested itself in our content and our themes. Um, even we begin with the title, which is Tutti a Tavola, I mean, everybody to the table, but with the asterisk at the end of Tutti, we, it's the gender neutral designation. Not all Italians love these. There's also the at symbol, there's the schwa. I think there's a lot of debate about this, but we sort of wanted to put forth this idea right away that we were, that this was sort of the, the tenor of the book. Um, and so then our, we chose our readings, our examples, our visual images with the same kind of care and attention. Um, and this collaboration was not just myself and Stacy, which we, I mean, we always say that this sort of saved us during COVID. We really had a focus and so much, you know, levity also that came out of it. Um, but because of the funding from the library, we received, we, in addition to grants from our union um, and the Center for Teaching and Learning at UMass, we were able to hire a graduate, a recent graduate to create the uh, graphic design you'll see in the chapters, a graduate student to create ancillary materials. So he wrote our workbook and lab manual. Um, and then an undergraduate helped us put everything into our LMS of Blackboard afterwards, which I'll show you at the end of the presentation. Um, so it was really, really a team effort. I think we're almost the most proud that we were able to sort of do that and all of this from a distance. Um, so Stacy is now going to walk you through a sample chapter of the first of two volumes. So this is the two volume book and she's going to show you the first. Okay, thank you, Melina. So as you can see right here, Tutia Tavala, volume one. Um, the second volume is laid out in a very similar way. We have our introduction, a dedication to the future language learners. And hopefully you can't hear my future language learner in the background <laughs> too loudly, um, but he is there. Um, so each volume has six chapters, a glossary, and then some extra resources at the end for difficult topics, as you might see in a mass media textbook. So the layout for each chapter is pretty much the same. We, so, we start with a sub theme and this chapter is Descriviamo Tutti. And then we set out the objectives for the students to be cl really clear about what we're wanting them to get out of this chapter. 
we decided that it would be fun and linguistically valuable to start each chapter with a song. And they're all rel at least relatively contemporary. And one thing that I thought was great about this project is it pushed me to update the repertoire of songs that I use. We went and looked for some recent ones that would work with each theme. And each song is either linked to the content through either the vocabulary or the grammar, or as in this case, both. So after the song comes the, voca um, the vocabulary section. And here you can see one of the amazing images that our graphic designer made for us here to help teach adjectives. And I think you might notice if you take a look that um, the people represented are more diverse than what you might see in a typical mass market textbook. And that was really important to us. Um, as you can see here, press books allowed us to gloss things right in the text as well as having a vocabulary section at the end of each chapter. So we tried to do everything in context. You can see we have a character, Martina here, who shows who um, her faces help describe the help with the adjectives. Um, so one of the reasons why we chose this chapter specifically is it gives a good example of what we were trying to do with nationalities. We tried to choose at least one nationality from every region. Instead, instead of being more um, European and um, North American focused as some of the textbooks are. And then we also have these cultural notes. Um, here we have one that talks about um, the Italian history of colonization. After the vocabulary, we have a grammar section and the way we've laid out these grammar sections is so this course will work in a full, fully remote setting as we are now. Um, none of our language classes are in person um, and also in the classroom. So it goes from being alone, doing exer having exercises that you can do by yourself to being more collaborative at, at the end. So a lot of our units also have these study tips to help students memorize the more difficult top topics. And after the grammar for each unit, we also have a video. And these videos are all contemporary. And a lot of them are loosely linked with a region. And this one is Lombardia. So after the videos, we have a cultural point and we went back and forth a lot about whether these should be in English or in Italian. And we decided that the topics were important enough that they really should be in English so that the students could really dig in and give their opinions about how these topics related to what's happening in the United States and um, so they could really think about their own conceptions and their own identity. So for um, the first volume, we don't have readings in Italian, but we do have them for the second volume. So that, um, so that, so that they do get that linguistic practice. So at the end, we have the review of the chapter and they have a list of all the things that they should have learned studying. And then we have these short multimedia quizzes so that they can test themselves before they move into the learning ma management system, which Melina will show you in a moment. And that's Blackboard. Thanks. All right, so you saw that um, that vision at the end and other the graphic that we had. So like I mentioned before, this was such a, um, a collaboration with a bunch of different people. And so one of those things was the workbook. One of the things that we ran into that we had to troubleshoot in our first semesters because we did this so quickly over the summer, 
um, is that we had this sort of PDF form of a workbook, which as any of you know, if you've transitioned to teach having an online workbook, nobody wants to go back from that. Mm -hmm. um, so we were able to transition this um, over the winter break onto Blackboard, which is one of the LMSs that UMass offers, but um, usually we use Moodle. But we chose um, Blackboard because it's the platform that our University Without Walls uses. So it's also for summer courses and winter courses. And so we thought this would be good for courses that can go all year round. Um, much like we saw in the first one, we divided it into weeks. And we tried it, it because you know, I really felt it important if we were going to replace our book that offered so many things, we wanted to be able to offer similar supports to our students to outside of the book. Um, so this is just the development shell. You don't see a lot of information here, but everything is divided into weeks. They have easy access to every chapter of the book. And then we've created grammar tutorials for a lot of the different points that they've studied. So these are narrated PowerPoints that we created that have a short little quiz at the end so students can check their work. Um, and then this is how we resolved the question also of the workbook that in the first semester had been in PDF form. Um, we were able to hire an undergraduate student to do this work for us and then a graduate student created this work. And so now these activities are all auto graded. Um, they look at like they're in the quiz fun function, but they can go in and they can fill stuff in. And so with the exception of a few record um, voice recordings and essays, um, we've sort of tried to mimic as much as possible the platform that we currently, we previously used at UMass. Um, and so now between the press book and the Blackboard, the, these are the two hubs of the course, which for us is good because we also have a lot of different people who teach the levels of elementary one and two, like I'm sure many, many schools do. We have graduate students. And so having as many courses as possible to have all this information already there really helps us. Um, and so finally, we just have, we have a few goals, I think, to finish up this project because we still look at it like it's a little bit in beta form. Um, one thing is that we would like, just like we saw Lorraine and Kiara have the recordings of the vocabulary. Um, Stacey showed you we have a lot of these presentations with dialogues and things like that at the beginning of the chapter and we'd love to have those recorded so students could also listen to them. Um, we think that's a pretty easy thing that we can do hopefully over the summer. Um, we'd like, obviously the workbook and lab right now are UMass specific, right? The book can be available to everyone shortly, hopefully by the fall. Um, but right now the workbook and lab are specific to us because they're on our Blackboard. So our goal is to create an outside hub that also houses the ancillary materials from the book. So those would be available for anyone too. Um, and then finally, we also, our book needs to be unpassword protected. Right now it's still in its beta form. And so we're still working on those things. And hopefully by the fall, then it will be available to everyone. No, I think that's it, unless you have anything to add, Stace. No, I think you covered it all. Thank you. We have about three minutes left for questions. Oh, it looks like Daniela asked, did you get, do we have to get permission? Um, we were, according to our libraries, um, videos from YouTube were fine. And then clips of a certain um, amount of time that they cut for us were fine in terms of permission. Um, and the video for Giovanotti is not the official video either. It's a YouTube video. So I think we were, YouTube was fine for press books. And I think maybe we should mention as well that all of the links we use have been saved in PERMA CC and the library has backed up most, some of at this point, but we'll be backing up all of our YouTube videos to a library page. Did I explain that right, Do you, Melina? Yeah. Yep. Any other questions? Uh, someone asked about what kind of copyright licensing will you be adopting once you do share those, uh, some of the resources? Stacy. I think we we are still we sort ended. of debating, um, <laughs> but definitely it will be a Creative Commons with allowing derivatives. And I think we just we changed our mind and decided against the share alike part of that. But we we haven't um, finalized it yet. Since we're still using this for the first time, we're taking advantage of some of the amazing undergraduate students that we have who are finding small things that need to be changed. So um, over the summer, we'll probably put it into its final form and then open it up to everyone. Uh, 
uh, it looks like there's a lot of people who are interested in seeing these and keeping in touch and perhaps ad adopting them. I did put the links in and also the passwords at the beginning of the presentation, so they should be in there. Great, thank you. Okay, well, I wanna thank you both. It was really an interesting presentation.